if the people of God only knew how much God has given to us. And that you can literally say to your sorrow, so long, bye-bye. You see, we made the decision to be sad because the Lord has said he's given us a peace that passeth all understanding. The Bible isn't saying that things wouldn't come that would make you cry or disappoint you, but you don't have to live there. As you get the bad news, it affects you. You may cry, you may scream, you may holler, but 30 seconds later you're saying, so long, bye-bye. So long, bye-bye. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of the young lady who lives in the house with my father. And when I will call to check on him, she'll be crying. He's saying he's dying, that he's going dead soon. Any day he's going dead soon, and she's crying. And I'm the daughter, and I'm not crying. So I said to her, look, it is not that I don't care. But when you know who God is, and where he is going, a man at 83 has been blessed with 13 extra years. And he's ready to go. You say, so long, bye-bye. I'll see you when I get there. Heaven is my home, amen. So you can tell sorrow bye-bye because your strength is in God, amen. Hallelujah. I am continuing today on what I started last week when I talked about an uneducated weapon. So I want to show you another aspect of an uneducated educated weapon as I deal with prayer, the mighty weapon. A believer who possesses an uneducated weapon is not only untrained and inexperienced pertaining to divine tactics and strategies in spiritual warfare, he also has very little knowledge about Satan, his kingdom, and his MO of doing things. And so the first thing you need to know about your adversary is his names. Before the fall, he was called Lucifer, which meant like bearer. That was when he was in all his glory. His name described who he was as the anointed cherub that covered, and he was also in charge of the worship of heaven. So when he was holy before iniquity was found in him, he was called Lucifer. After the fall, he is called Satan, which means adversary. He's called the devil, which means slanderer. He's called the old serpent. He was a serpent that appeared in Eden. He's called the dragon. The Bible tells us in Revelation that Michael fought with the dragon. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He is the one who causes one sister to accuse another sister falsely. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's the antichrist. Jesus said he's the father of lies. He's the enemy. He's an evil spirit. He's a murderer. He's a thief, the tempter, the wicked one, and deceiver, just to name a few of the names that Satan has. And so by his name is his character. Whenever he turns up as a liar, he's going to lie all day long. When he turns up as a tempter, he's going to be saying to you, do this. Nobody's not looking, so now you can put it in your pocket. He is all these things and more. We also need to know his tactics and his strategies. His tactics and his strategies. Through deception, lies, fear, bullying, and dominance, he uses his power to make the unsaved and the powerless, ignorant, frightened Christians sin against the Lord. So Satan is a bully. He's always pressuring you to do it now. So his tactics is to use deception. That's what he, what he did as he lied to Eve. He said, you will not surely die. Satan cannot get anyone really to serve him without lying or deceiving. He always paints a beautiful picture. He always tells you what you want to hear. He always shows you what you want to see. When a man marries a woman of God and vice versa, and on the honeymoon he realizes this is Jezebel, or she realizes, you know, that this is the son of Belial, 
is because Satan presented to you, he deceived you into thinking that you were getting one of God's best servants and really and truly it was a setup. So his tactics and his strategy is always to deceive and to lie to and he brings fear. People make decisions out of fear. You know, when you get frightened, you know, so out of fear you jump up and you do what you shouldn't do. And he's always bullying and trying to control, you know, trying to make you do what you don't have any intentions of doing. And that is something that we don't realize as Christians. Even sometimes telemarketers call or there's an ad that is a, a, a what should I say, a promotion that is going on. You walk into a store, and they say to you, if you take 10 of these now for $100, you know, such and such. And you say, okay, just let me think about it. And they keep going, 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 going. Anytime you are forced to make a decision without consulting God, you don't need to make that decision. Because you must understand that you don't lose anything that God has for you. If you don't get it now, you will get it later. What God has for you is for you. What you want sometimes now isn't what God wants for you now. So you don't have to grab at it in desperation. You have the right to back away. So you, you walk through the mall. They want you to take another, you know, cell phone account. Or buy the, you get a free phone right now and a, and a month free. But then after that, you're paying for this phone $600 a month. And, and this one wants. Said, if I know one phone is good enough, unless the phone can work miracles, you don't need a second one. One is enough. So he bullies us into making financial decisions that he knows will bring ruin to us. And he may say, looks like the opportunity of a lifetime. Well, what is that, that game? Sure, let's make a deal. This morning, as I was getting ready, I heard the man say to the woman, I will give you $1,000 in your hands now, or you can say you want what is behind the window. You see what I'm saying? And so that's what the devil does. He tries to get the counterfeit. He tries to get the insufficient in our hands right now because he knows that we don't know what is behind the door. But when your trust is in God, God don't, God don't bless us by a gamble. He don't bless us by taking a chance. He gives us. He has already decided what he has planned for us. So you don't have to gamble away your prosperity. When he comes, you can say, I can wait on the Lord. He will do what he said he will do. I said last week that many of us tend to think that the devil is some weak, powerless, ignorant person. But the devil has power and lots of it. And he was created with wisdom, which he still has, but it's corrupted, that kind of stuff. I want to show you another aspect of Satan from God's perspective. I want to show you his weakness. He is impotent against the omnipotence of God. You see, whenever Satan challenges you, he's also a challenging God. And so when he comes to fight with God, the man has no strength. No power, no ability at all. When it comes to omniscience or knowledge, he has no knowledge in comparison to the encompassing, inexhaustible knowledge of God. The, the thing with Satan is he operates in the now just like you and I. We make decisions based on now. You will make a decision if you can buy a $100 dress based on the $50 you have in your purse. Satan is like that. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know what is going to happen tomorrow, but he will come to speak a future in your ears that does not exist on God's agenda for your life. He will come to make you act now based on what he's been able to cause you to deceive you into thinking that tomorrow is going to be. That's what the horoscope is about. There's 7.5 billion people in the world. And everybody gets the same horoscope under the same sign living all over the world. Hmm? 
So the man who lives in the bushes, who decides he wants to live in nature, his horoscope will say to him, today you will get a car. And there's no car that is going to come because he can't drive and he can't buy one. And where he lives, the trees and bushes, he cannot drive a car. Not even when they show you those vehicles that can go through the rugged terrain. It can't get there. God knows the future. When it comes to wisdom now, he's not wise when it comes to God. There is nothing Satan can put together that airtight. To ensnare you or trap you that God can't get you out of it with a flick of a finger. You see, when he gets us to get into it, we can't see our way out. We can't dig our way out of the tunnel. We can't climb out of the bottom of the well. But for God, it is easy because he has wisdom that Satan doesn't have. And he has knowledge that Satan doesn't have. And he knows the future. That Satan doesn't know. And so when people rush you to make your future today, you can say to them, look, I don't have to rush into this decision. My future has already been planned by God. So when it comes to God on every account, Satan is weak. You must also know that he transforms himself as an angel of light. This means he is never who he shows up to be. He's never a true prophet, a preacher, a healer, a deliverer, a provider, a friend, prosperity, opportunity, father, God, guide, counselor, interpreter of the Logos and Rima word of God. He is never who he turns up to be. He just looks like it. You know, there's some people, when they put on a suit and a tie, they look like a preacher. But they're far from being saved, but they just look like it. Satan turns up looking the part, but he's not a messenger of God. And because he looks the part, leaders and believers whose spiritual eyes are not open, they always receive him as a man of God. Sometimes he walks into a church dressed like a bishop. Big cross and chain and the whole pomp and circumstance. And we run, oh, Bishop is in church. A man of God is here. Before you put him in the seat of the holy, you better see that person with the eyes of the spirit. Because he has turned up to ruin the service. He has turned up to release his demons and devils in the congregation to cause problems. Even in your life, when people come in as a good friend and they give you this, oh, I'm going to wait until you get off from work and I'm going to drive you to your house. The devil is up to something. He wants to pull you from out of the presence of the living God. He is never who he turns up to be. Secondly, as a roaring lion, he walks throughout the entire earth seeking whom he may devour or tear down spiritually by destroying their faith in God and blinding their eyes to the truth. He also enslaves and uses his captors. So Satan walks around looking for Christians. You don't have to be a weak, anemic Christian. You, 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 you could be a strong, vibrant, powerful Christian. And he's looking to see who he can throw trouble on like he did with Job. To get you all discouraged, to say, you know, I'm serving God for nothing. I am living holy and my life is like hell because that is his agenda. He's always looking for a believer to devour. He's always looking for somebody that is weak, who don't know the word of God for sure, to see if he can capture that person and then use that person as a slave in the house of God. When Satan captures weak, ignorant Christians in the house of God, they are the ones that he uses to bring division in the body. They're the ones he uses to form cliques. If you have pride in your life or superiority or you think that you are important, you are the one that Satan is looking for because pride is the works of the flesh. Pride comes out of the nature of Satan and wherever he finds his nature in you, he knows that he has legal ground. 
One of the things God taught me when he would train me in spiritual warfare and dreams and visions is wherever sin is or darkness, sin is called darkness in scripture, Satan has the legal right to occupy it. And so if you have hatred in your heart, your heart becomes darkened. I just want you to picture yourself in an all white dress. But right here where your heart is, is a black spot. That is where Satan has the legal right to dwell in your life. And it is from that place in your life, he will seek to overtake your whole body. That's why it is important for us to daily examine ourselves and repent and ask God to cleanse us. Because once darkness get into you, it is not going to rest until it spreads and envelops your entire life. So he looks to see who he can devour and who he can use to touch the anointed of God to remove pastors and deacons and elders and ministers from from their position. He looks to see who he can use to lie and to slander, to discredit the ministry and the anointing of a child of God. Another thing you must know about Satan is his consistent nature and character is to steal, to kill, and destroy everyone and everything that belongs to God. If we could remember that all the time, I remember when I was a younger, lonely Christian. Lonely in terms of needing love. Needed somebody to say, I love you, and to treat me special, and to hold me in their arms. I'm not talking about sexual intercourse. I'm talking about starving for love. Starving for adoration. Starving for attention and affection. When you don't get the, the kind of love you need from mother, father, sister, brother, pastor, friend, boss, whatever, and your whole life is void of love, but you're the one that is pouring love into other people, you become desperate. And you're serving God, but you're starving for love. You see other people all around you get in love. You see the friendships that they have among each other, but you can't get nobody to love you like that. And I remember how the devil, from time to time, he would bring a, a young man who would declare how much he loved me. I love you. You are such a nice girl. You are such a decent girl. And oh my God, you just want the love. You just want the love. But you can't have this love that Satan brings to you and stay in church and sing in the choir too. You can't get, you can't take this love that the devil is offering you and still be counseling people at the altar when they give their life to Christ. And so many times I found myself at a crossroads. It's not that I don't want to serve God, but nobody in here is loving me, but somebody out here, how are you? I'm coming to take you to lunch. And, you know, they, 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 they adore you and compliment you, how you dress and how you look. And I find myself leaving church and having this relationship because I was getting this love and it felt good to be loved. And as soon as I left the house of God, it will come to an end. It's like everything the devil promised me, he never gave me. And now here it is. I have to crawl back into church like a loopy doll because all you have now is God. It's real. Lord, please forgive me. Help me, Jesus. And now the Lord has to heal that hurt and that disappointment. This person who said they will love me left me now for somebody else. You know, that kind of stuff. And it happened over and over again. I'm talking about his, his consistent nature is always to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And, and he knew that I was desperate for love, so he would come at any time. You know, when you get back your bearing and you start to serve God again, here comes love, and I want it. Until finally, finally, I made the decision. I said, God, I promise you, I will never leave you for another, another man again. And I had to seek God to bring healing and to fill the void and to fill me with his love. That's why Colossians 2.10 says, you are complete in him. So now I am not love-starved. I am overloved by God. 
And there's nothing the devil can come with now that can cause me to leave God because I am not that young, hungry, desperate woman looking for love. It doesn't matter if my pastor don't love me, my husband, my mother, my sister, my brother, my son. I know for sure that God loves me. And I'm not saying that because the Bible says so. I know that God loves me. And so the devil will always present a plan, a package, an opportunity for you. He'll even get you a better job elsewhere. Take you out of the will of God and when you get to the other side, the grass that look green isn't green at all. I have been there. I know what I'm talking about. His consistent nature is always to steal the goodness of God from you, to steal the blessing of God from you, to steal your peace of mind, to steal your joy, to steal your security in God and to destroy your life. During the time that I would, would be backslidden, I would always live in fear. I would live in fear of being able to keep my job. Because while I was backslidden and can't get away from him, yet still I knew that I didn't have the security I had when I was safe and working. It didn't matter what the boss threatened to do. I just had a confidence that God was going to see me through. It didn't matter what my co-workers conspired to do. I knew that they couldn't get me fired because God had given me the job. I was living holy and I was a tither, and the tithe was going to rebuke the devourer. But the moment I was backslidden, I had no other recourse, and I lived every day of fear. He came and he stole my confidence. He stole my faith. He stole my peace. He stole my trust in God. This is the enemy that we are called to war against, that we've been given authority to bind and to lose. And so we mustn't play with the devil. He does not play fear. If you have a good marriage, he's going to come at it. If you have a good name and a good testimony, he's going to slander it. If you have friends, he will seek to give you enemies. If you've got money, he will seek to make you poor. Whatever God has given to you, Satan will seek to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He's the father of lies, which means he is the original liar. And what Satan does is he mixes some of the truth with lies to capture those he wants to destroy. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie or deceptive. You see, it is that element of truth that will capture us. It doesn't take anything of Satan to say, you know, God is good. And you go, yeah, God is good. But here he comes. But why is this happening to you? He is responsible for this. All he wants to do is get a little truth in there. God is good. But, and then the rest, he's a liar. And I wish sometimes all of us, including me, when Satan begins to talk, we will say, bye-bye. I don't want you here. I don't want to hear nothing you have to say. Because the moment you stop to listen, you've given him too much time. I want you to know that one second is too much time to give the devil. He can give you a bookload of information in just one single second. He's a liar. He's an accuser of the brethren. He's also a heroine. Whenever Satan gets the opportunity to pastor a church, he destroys the church. He keeps the congregation living in fear at all times. I know of people who are afraid to leave churches because the, the heroine said to them, if you leave, a curse will come upon you. If you leave, destruction will come upon you. You can't leave until I bless you to go. He always wants all of your money. He doesn't care about your mortgage, your car note, or your children. He wants all your money. As soon as you get paper, all in the offering, and he's still asking for more. A heroine does not show any love or concern. The heroine doesn't care if you come to church or not. Just bring what I want when you come. He likes to know all of your business, that he can use it against you to hold you and to bind you to him. But shepherds of God spend time in prayer, seeking God in your behalf. When they see by the Spirit what you are going through, 
They're praying and fasting and praying to God for your healing, your miracle, and your deliverance. Jesus himself said he's the heroine that when he sees the thief coming or the wolf coming or the bear coming, he jumps over the fence and runs for safety. He doesn't care about you. But Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I have come to give my life for the sheep. This is the devil that we have to deal with on a daily basis. I don't know how much of this I'm going to get through with. But I'm going to go as far as time would permit me. I want you to give you an idea of how Satan's kingdom is structured. Satan is the sole leader of the kingdom of darkness. He doesn't have anybody else on equal with him. It is him and him alone. He is the one who masterminds all the evil, all the wickedness, all the depravity, abominations, the various kinds of adultery and, and demonic beliefs that, that people believe and adhere to. Then he passes every evil he can think of or imagine to high-ranking demons. They're the highest-ranking demons in his army called principalities. Remember before the fall that all the angels held positions and they were high-ranking Angels that were our angels like Michael and Gabriel, some of those angels fell with Satan. And so when Satan began to put his kingdom together, he gave them similar positions in his kingdom that they held in God's kingdom. And so he passes, all, passes on all of his evil to principalities. They are the high, highest ranking demons. These principalities then pass on this information to another set of demons that are called powers, which means that they are invested with power. You know, when you were a sinner, sometimes the temptation would overcome you, and you say, this thing is on me so strong, I can't resist it. That is what the powers do. You know, they, they overpower you, so to speak. And then the powers, they then vest rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places, they then give them the power now to go forward and to fulfill Satan's plans in the earth. Now spiritual, the rulers of the darkness of this world, they are the ones who are assigned to keep the world in spiritual darkness. And so, Wherever you see a false religion, wherever you see places where people don't have any interest in God, the rulers of the darkness of this world, that is their mandate to keep the world in spiritual blindness and in a morally corrupt state. Acts 26, 18 says, um, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God. So by the preaching of the word, that was what the apostles was able to do. Paul said to the church at Corinth, if our gospel is hid, it is because the God of this world, who is Satan, have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest they see the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, and become born again. So these principalities pass on their evil plans to the powers and endow them with the might they need to execute Satan's will in the earth. And then the powers give the rulers of darkness Satan's plan to keep the world in darkness. And then they also give Satan's plan and strength to spiritual wickedness in high places or wicked spirits to do all kinds of evil. So when you see all these murders and rapes and um, mothers and fathers killing their children and, and adults having sexual relationships with children. When you see murders now where people are just cutting you up and chopping your body into pieces and dropping it here and there. And when you look at abortions and all of the wickedness, this is what spiritual wickedness in high places this is what they have been commissioned by Satan to do. On the one hand, Satan has the Jehovah Witnesses over here saying, you've got to work to inherit the earth because heaven is already gone. 
the 144,000 will go there. You can't get there. So he keeps them in that darkness. He keeps the Mormon and the Scientologists in that darkness. And then the wickedness now. They have spirits, which I will come to, up and down the earth saying, kill that person, rape that person, rob that bank, do this. That's what the spirits the, of wickedness are assigned to do. That's their nature. Now, the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places, their best secondary ranking demons with power and authority and send them into the earth to fulfill Satan's wicked agenda. Now, the principalities, the powers, the, the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places, they dwell in the second heaven where Satan and his demons occupy. They never come down into the earth. But from above, once they send these demons down into the earth now, to influence people, to possess people or influence people by dreams, by alcohol, by drugs, by delusions, to commit murder or to become involved in various crimes and idolatry and false religions, these spirits continue to receive strength and energy from these demons above who energize them. It's a kind of like what we call Wi-Fi, you know, the satellite is up there, and you pick up the satellite. The demons are up there. They get their instructions and energy from these demons. Jesus confirms in Matthew 12, 43, that there are demons living illegally in the earth. He says, when the unclean is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places. Dry places refer to uninhabited regions of the earth. So because they don't want to go back to where they come from with their to assignment unfilled, they look for desert places, literally desert, uninhabited places where you will find jackals and wild beasts and stuff, and they stay there. Then Jesus says after a while they get tired living in those regions, they say, let me come back and see if Sister Sue Sue is still living in fornication. And when they come back, they're bringing some friends with them. And all of them come. So you go from fornication to prostitution because the whole idea is to corrupt your life. That's why Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, 11 to put on the whole armor of God. Now, we have been given authority that when these earthbound demons come into the earth realm, we have been given authority by God to bind them. Jesus tells us in Matthew 16 verse 19, he says, I give you, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And so we have been given authority to bind up every demonic assignment that it is God's will for us to deal with in the earth realm. We have been erroneously taught that we are to go up into the high places and tear the devil's kingdom down. We have no legal right to begin to approach the demons who live in the second heaven. I want you to pay attention to the scripture. God says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Keys of the kingdom is the symbol of authority. I give you authority and I will give you power. Notice he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So I'm giving you divine authority. I'm empowering you. I am giving you charge that whenever you come across a demonic assignment that is my will for you to engage in that battle, God says, once you bind up that activity in the earth realm, remember the earth has been given to us. We have dominion in the earth realm. The demons and devils that they're now called the fallen angels are permitted to dwell in the second heaven. God gave them permission to be there. Satan is called the prince of the power of the ear. God says, because these demons up here, have sent those down here into the earth that I have given to you. 
He says, when you recognize them, when you, when you see demons of confusion, and you say, you spirit of confusion, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord then, as he showed me in the vision when he was training me in warfare, he leaves his third heaven. He leaves his throne and he comes into the second heaven and he says to those principalities and powers and wickedness and darkness, he says, you need to move. Once those heavenly demons, the strongest ones that are up there leave, these down here become weakened because they have no Wi-Fi, so to speak. Nothing is coming down from above that charges them and energizes them to do what they are doing. Many Christians unknowingly have gone up into the second heaven illegally to tear the devil's kingdom down, and many have lost their lives and become seriously injured. I said last week that there's a protocol to warfare. America does not get into Afghanistan because it has planes. You need permission to land. American Airlines can, can fly to any place in the world, but if Britain doesn't say you can land at this airport, listen, it will drop out of the sky for lack of gas. You see what I'm saying? And so when you are going to fight spiritual warfare, you must understand the protocol. God says, what is in the heavens belong to me. I am going to deal with them. What is in the earth? I have given you the keys of the kingdom. And so with the keys of the kingdom, whenever you see a demon or devil, then you have the authority to bind it and to rebuke it and to send it back to hell from whence it come. Satan likes us to fight from a place of ignorance because he knows then but for the grace of God or the intervention of God, he has the right to smite us. That's why many people, believers who travel to nations that are given over to Satanism and demonology and witchcraft and sorcery, like Haiti has been sold to the devil, and, and many African places, there are certain places in Africa that is given over to witchcraft. People go there and they buy all kinds of dead people, bones and portions to do this and to do that. And so when you leave and you go to minister, and then they say, well, we send for you because we've been watching you and realize that you are a man of war, a woman of war, and we want you to bring down the territorial spirit. When you go to do that, you are coming back home in a casket. Only what turns up in your service that God gives you jurisdiction over, that you are to bind and you are to send back to hell. Because when you don't know how Satan operates, he sits back and he says, let her come. Oh, yes, yeah, she's just coming at me with greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But she doesn't know that I have the legal right to be here. Just like in your life, as long as you have sin in your life, you can't tell Satan to not to trouble you because darkness is his legal place to live. And that's why I always make certain that my life is shining white. Whenever God look at me, I am white like I bathe in Clorox. I want to be clean. Because I know what it's like to be a sinner. I know what it's like to be a backslider. I know what it's like to give place to the devil. And bitter water and sweet water cannot come out of the same fountain. And so we have to be clean. And we have to fight the war in the earth that God has given to us. Every demon-possessed person you see is not yours for, to cast out. One of the pressures that have been placed upon us as preachers and evangelists is that when we don't approach a demon, people tend to think you're fearful and you don't have any power. But it has nothing to do with fear. It's fighting the battle that needs to be fought. Every person that is possessed by a devil don't want to be delivered. Some people have willingly and knowingly given themselves to the devil to serve him. And so you have to see it and leave it alone. Sometimes that is not the time that God has set for that person's deliverance. Because there are many people who want to live a peaceable life of sin. 
And so what they do, they come to be freed of the harassment of the kingdom of darkness to go to the nightclub. I say to people, if you want to sin, don't come. Because I don't want to be responsible for the seven more that you are going to get. If you intend to live a Christian life and you want to be free that you can worship God in spirit and in truth, then surrender to God and we will cast out the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And so now we have to be wiser and we have to be strategic when it comes to deliverance. Because a lot of pastors are being overwhelm and attack severely by demons and devils because of people they lay hands on and they were delivered by the enemy but it was not for them to do and that person did not follow through they just want release even here on Wednesdays there are people that come and I see them and they come with spirits and all they want for me to do I hear about you I hear about this church and somebody tell me come here and I will get delivered when I was ignorant, I would start to pray right away. But then you begin to ask questions. Are you saved? How are you living? How did you get this? Oh, I do the Ouija board. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, I get my, my, my thing read every now and again, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. And so they're making excuses. They just don't want to change their life, but they want delivered. I don't deliver. I mean, I can't. The power is not mine. But I have enough common sense to know this is not a valid fight to get involved in. But you see a person come broken, and they're crying, and they want God, and they want to be free. And the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you. You get the oil, and you begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, loose this soul, loose this life, loose this individual. Much of the harassment and pressure and confusion and problems that we encounter in our lives. It did not come because we sinned or it did not come because God wanted us to be tested. It came because we fought an illegal battle. Because I remember when I was at home every morning around 7 o'clock, this gentleman James will call me. And every morning, James had an issue, and he won't pray because when I prayed, it worked. And, and people would keep calling me, and they would keep saying, you know, you pray for me, and I am better. And somebody else will call. They'll tell somebody, call her, and you will get better. And my life is just like a tornado. All kinds of hell coming. People are being delivered, and I am fighting 724 nonstop until one morning, James called, and the Lord said to me, stop it. He said, stop this praying for people who are not living right. You're causing the enemy to come at you all the time. And he said to me, when you know people aren't living right and they're called for prayer, he said, don't bind anything. Just pray to me. Just let it be like this. Father, help sister so-and-so bring deliverance, free her. And the Lord said to me, I'll take care of it after you pray. So there's wisdom, there's protocol. You can't be doing the devil's stuff and, and want the victory and the deliverance of the righteous. And so when you don't understand how Satan operates, you live a persecuted life. Your children come under attack. They become rebellious. Your marriage come under attack. Your favor with your employers and different people come under attack because you are fighting where you should not have fought and you're not seeking God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But you've got to understand spiritual protocol. Stand with me, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before me. I call on his great name. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, 
We have the victory. Come on and sing it like we know it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Demons will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before me. When I call on his great name, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. I know you're singing, but I don't see no fire. I, I, I want to pray for people who, who believe what they're saying in the name of Jesus, because we're going to run some demons Legally today in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Many of you have been harassed, your husband harassed with sickness and all kinds of stuff. So we have to make the declaration, you know. The Bible tells us that when the ark of the Lord was brought in to the presence of Israel on the battlefield, they began to shout so much that the earth shook and the Philistines get frightened. But we need to do that today as we sing, all right? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, stand before me when we call on. His great name in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. Come on, let's sing it again. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. I know I do. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Demons will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on his great name. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. One more time, make it personal. In the name of Jesus. I have, I have the victory, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee, tell me who can stand before me when I call on his great name, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, I have the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus declares in Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. I want you to take hold today of your key, the authority that you have in that weapon of prayer in the name of Jesus. And I want you to begin to address the demons by name or nature that has been coming against you to frustrate you, to keep you back, to hold back your blessings. You see them on the job. You see them in the church. You see them in your home. Sometimes they even come at you yourself. How dare these demons to seek to try uh, to get a righteous man to sin against God. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, today in the name of Jesus, uh, we come to you. Uh, and we bring by name and nature every demon. Uh, demons of confusion. Demons of distress. Uh, demons of poverty. Demons 
demons of pain and sorrow, demons of rejection, demons of slander and lies, demons, mighty God, that come to frustrate uh, your purposes for our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we take hold uh, of the keys of the kingdom uh, and we bind up within our ruler measure every demon and devil uh, that has been coming at us, our sons and our daughters, uh, our finances, our well-being, uh, the anointing of God upon our lives, the call of God upon our lives. Come on out of your mouth. Uh, you know who the devil has been interfering with. Uh, your nieces, your nephews, your children. Uh, sometimes you hear him speak out to your husband, your supervisor, your director. You hear the voice of the enemy. You see his actions uh, in this service. Uh, the anointing of God is here. Take hold of the keys of the kingdom. Uh, for God is standing by. Uh, as soon as you bind it, God is binding it. Uh, as soon as you bound it, uh, God has it bind in the heavens. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, everything that has been coming at you. Uh, everything that has been seeking uh, to antagonize you. Uh, sickness and disease. Uh, the persecution that comes uh, from the kingdom of darkness. Uh, everything that comes after your peace uh, and your joy uh, everything that comes to discredit your anointing uh, and the voice of God in the earth through you uh, come on Zion hallelujah we are the redeemed open your mouth uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, I don't have to chase your demon he says if you bind it uh, if you bind it uh, be it unto you according to your faith uh, come on and bind up uh, everything that has been blocked in your path, uh, everything that has been stopping uh, you from succeeding uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we bind up every earthbound demon uh, that has come down into the earth uh, to attack us uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, every illegal agent in the earth realm, uh, we bind up their assignments. Uh, we bind it up in Jesus' name. Call the names of people Call the names of people that you see demons and devils working through at you. Uh, call their names uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so. Uh, Father, brother, so-and-so, or sister, so-and-so. In the name of Jesus, my aunt, my uncle, my mother, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I bind up uh, the, 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 the operation of demons and devils. Uh, through the workers of iniquity in the name of Jesus no hurt no harm no injury no loss is going to come at me witchcraft voodoo santeria the work of the witch and the wizard the sorcerer the medium the spiritist necromancy we bind it up God in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You sound very quiet for demon busting people. You sound very quiet for demon busting people. Come on, speak with confidence. Speak with confidence. Speak with confidence. Speak with confidence. When the devil opens his mouth, he speaks loud and strong for everyone to hear. Open your mouth and address everything that has been coming at you, harassing you and persecuting you. Come on and plead the blood of Jesus Christ against the forces of darkness. I plead the war and blood of Jesus Christ against the armed forces of hell that has come out against me in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against the plots and the plans of the enemy to hinder my path and my advancement in the name of Jesus Christ. Every assignment against my prosperity and my, my advancement, my success, every assignment against the favor of God on my life I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against it. Satan, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you. Everything, God, everything, 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 everything. Come on, plead the blood against your enemies. 
You know their names, call their names. Uh, every enemy known and unknown, visible and invisible, hallelujah. Even the spirit of death. Uh, sometimes he come to kill your joy, come to kill your health, your finances. He come to kill your social life. Uh, every form of death uh, that has been released at us, we bind it up in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and we send it back to hell and we lose life. Uh, we lose success, prosperity. We lose the abundance of money and favor and the material things that we, we need uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every legal matter, God, uh, we claim victory and success. We we'll lose it today in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, oh God, for everything the devil has tried to do, we bind it up in Jesus' name and we lose your goodness, your favor. Your success, your prosperity, your goodness, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I pray over the offering today, God. I thank you for blessing your people. I thank you for every gift today in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for increasing it. And I thank you, God, that it will continue to be used for the advancement.